One of our favorite mid-range lines, Asus Tough, is now making gaming PCs, but there's something pretty weird about this one. It's using a CPU that you normally don't see in pre built gaming PCs. You wanna see what it's about? We're gonna open it up and find out after a word from today's sponsor. As PC gamers, we love staying at home on our gaming setups. It's who we are. But when it's time to travel to that new part of the world that you've always dreamed about, but don't wanna worry about losing your phone service or a massive data roaming bill when you get back, then you should learn about today's video sponsor, Aerolo. Aerolo is the simplest way to purchase eSIMs for 200 plus countries and regions right from your device and instantly have data connectivity when you land. No more hunting around the airport for a SIM vendor or just paying the data roaming fees. With Aerolo, there is one less travel stress point on your shoulders. And if you use my code TOASTY3, you can save even more money. It's super simple to use Aerolo. Download the app, choose an eSIM plan, purchase the plan, and go through the easy to follow instructions on how to install an eSIM on your supported device device, and just like that you are ready to use your device when you land at your destination. Aerolo is trusted by 15 million world travelers and focuses on eliminating physical SIM waste with a 100% digital eSIM solution, which also saves you money in the process. So what are you waiting for? It is time to take that trip of your dreams and stay connected with today's video sponsor, Aerolo. Check the link down below or the QR code on screen to download Aerolo today and make sure to use my code TOASTY3 for $3 off your first eSIM. Now let's dive into the video, shall we? So shout out to Asus Tough, or basically Asus, for sending over this pre-roll gaming PC. This is the T500 gaming desktop. Comes with a 5060 Ti and an i7 laptop CPU. More specifically, the laptop CPU is an i7 13620H, which is a 10 core 16 threaded processor. And uh, Asus is pretty excited about this because I guess this is a way for them to keep their costs down to where you could get a pre built with the 5060 Ti, but have a lesser CPU. But we do have some obvious concerns about that. Now, I do have to say, because the box was so small and now that I'm seeing the system, it, it is like the size of like an HP, like Acid Green Pavilion or like a Victus. It's very small. Um, so for it to have as much performance as it could have may actually be kind of cool. It's just interesting seeing an power Asus Tough free bolt. It's The just power supply wild. is like an, it looks like an Optiplex one, dude. Do you see it down in here? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's so tiny. Okay, well. Jay, can you see that? It's like a small form factor, like power supply. It's crazy. All right, so uh, initial impression up front looks like we have decent, uh, is that the airflow? Looks like airflow on the side. This ventilation doesn't look like it's actually ventilation. It just looks like it's a design. So we'll see what temperatures are like. We have USB-C, two USB-3s. Um, we have some peel to remove here and a bunch of the tough branding logos going on here. But it's kind of one of those, it looks like a traditional office computer from the backside here. And then they added this and the tempered glass. And I gotta say the tempered glass looks like it would come off in a different way, but it actually is just one a uh, big side panel. Hmm. It's kind of an optiplex that someone modded a side panel onto. It's going with the is it stuck on something. I don't know. It's like the bottom's not moving. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. It probably just slid on. Not great. Yeah, look at that. It's like it's like one piece. That's very interesting. So you know what's funny? Isn't this a Prime card? So it's we're using dual. an Asus Dual, not an Asus Tough graphics card. We were talking about that off camera. It'd be kind of funny if they didn't use an Asus Tough graphics card, but I guess we're using <laughs> Asus Dual cards. To be fair, given the market right now, it's kind of whatever GPU they can get. Dude, this is This bizarre. is so bizarre looking. Do you see how this looks, Shona? So yeah. the CPU, being a laptop CPU, it has what looks like a laptop cooler on it that goes to a little 90 mil air cooler? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's with like, heat pipes. It's like an actual, like I mean, yeah, like it's like what Matt just said. This is how a laptop would normally look. You'd have like a copper plate with heat pipes that would make the heat go somewhere else. They're kind of doing that by having it right on the back. I mean, it's interesting, but this is crazy too. Sodium, sodium RAM, which it's just like a laptop where it lifts up. It's single channel right now. It's one Samsung stick at let's see, 16 gigs, 5600 megahertz. You know, we we prefer dual channel but it, at least it's DDR5 dual rank and everything. Yeah, very little issues with DDR5 single channel versus uh, DDR4, so that's good to see. This is just so strange. So the power supply is a light on um, 80 plus platinum, which is pretty wow. crazy. And it looks like we're looking at about 500 watt total output. Um, so I mean, that's, you know, that's definitely plenty for this system. And really the only things you could change, like if you wanted to swap anything over to like a normal system, because people always ask us this, mm. your GPU can go and your SSD can go. Everything else in this build is proprietary. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it's a cool concept, but it just gives me concerns, especially at the $1,300 price point this thing is at. Uh, I mean, it's a 5060 Ti build and in the market we're in, 
that's kind of normal ranges. I know they're trying to compete with pre-built systems that have the i5 14400F. I'd be curious to see what this 13 Gen i7 that's a laptop can do once it has some extra beefy cooling on it. Um, I guess just turn it on and see what we got here. But the sodium in the laptop CPU is just, it's interesting. It doesn't seem like something long-term that makes much sense, but we'll see what the performance is like now. What also makes it to where the power supply is proprietary too, because if you look, we have, well, there's no 24 pin. It's just like a, a six pin and a four pin. There it goes. Ah, I was okay. going to say, I I was like, like, we, we've had uh, some bad uh, luck here with computers not turning on. Bright RGB strip yeah. up top. It looks pretty cool. Let's uh, cool. Curious to see what it looks like with the side panel on. Oh, and there's some glow up front too. So we got a little bar up here, a little glow around the edge. We have some of this Asus Tough stuff. This is about what it looks like with the side panel on. I mean, not bad. It's a, it's, a, it's a cute little system. It's compact. I like how they kind of do like the tilt here. Looks kind of cool. It reminds me of a console in a way. But yeah, all in all, this is an interesting concept. We, this is normally a concept we see by buying a random computer on like <laughs> AliExpress or Timu. Like honestly, that's what we normally see. So it is interesting to see a pre-built company like Asus, or specifically Asus Tough, getting into the market and using these. Will it make sense for you as an average consumer? I guess we got a benchmark and see how well these two pair together. But so far, it's an interesting concept. All right, guys, we are playing Call of Duty Warzone on our mobile CPU and our desktop graphics card, and we are currently running 1440p, and we're at the balance preset. We're not using any upscaling, max FOV, and I'm excited to see what this thing does because, I mean, we know what a 5060 Ti 16 gig runs like. Actually, pretty good. They're really expensive, but it makes sense. But we do not really know what a mobile CPU like this is going to run like on a desktop. Yeah, and the cooling in theory should be better than the laptop. So normally the CPU is used to being at 100 degrees Celsius all the time. But now we're in the 70s, which I don't think we mentioned it. I think this thing only has the one exhaust fan. Like, I don't even think it has a fan up front, does it? I guess that might really be like all it really needs. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty low power system, not in terms of performance, but in terms of power draw, it's definitely going to be pretty efficient with that CPU. 150 FPS. Yeah, I mean, the FPS is looking good. This has been no upscaling too, which is pretty wild. GPU um, is at 98, 99%, so we're not bottlenecked. That's most of the work, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yo! Like I just threw. Wait, no, he threw. Oh, <laughs> he oh, absolutely I threw. I was really hoping he'd do something oh, like that. No. Yeah, it looks like single channels aren't really holding us back too much. No stutters, really. It's pretty dang smooth. Um, obviously, adding more RAM is easy. You get so damn memory. Sometimes it's cheaper than desktop memory, mm -hmm. especially DDR5. So that's a little cost-effective there. But, um, yeah, I guess the biggest selling point is, as long as the performance is good, cool. But, like, what is the long-term viability of something like this? Wow. Oh, oh, that's enough. In a dream. Where'd you come from? Oh, I don't know, man. Helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking over in real life. <laughs> oh, I don't have any shields. Saw that shadow. Some no resurgence. Oh, no. Yes. Competent yes. teammates. Oh. Oh, my, my aim, my tracking, everything. Not good. Oh. Oh. Your oh. team's rushing. Let's get your team. Oh. Oh, oh we did it. We got a Warzone victory. Let's happens. go. <laughs> Sign of a good PC. <laughs> I mean, honestly, because this game didn't seem like it needed a lot of the CPU. The 5060 Ti, I mean, it's really expensive, but it does do a good job. Next game. All right, guys, let's play an eSports title. We got Fortnite running 1440p on DX12, a limited frame rate, far view distance and low textures. They're running 1440p. It will be a little more GPU bound than you would normally if you're running 1080p. Um, but as you can see, the CPU is at 100% usage right now. So uh, running these lower settings, and we'll do that again with CS2 at 1080p during the built-in benchmark section at the end of the video, uh, we'll really be able to see what this i7 laptop CPU is capable of in this situation. And so far it's good. The biggest question, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking at home, is it good enough to justify the fact that this is the only CPU you could ever run in this system without having to do a whole motherboard swap? 
That's ultimately up to you guys. Um, personally, for me, it, I probably wouldn't be super satisfied with that, uh, especially at the price point, but we don't really know what the market's gonna turn into into the PC space in the coming months um, with everything going on in the world. So who knows, this might be one of our better options, but right now I'm happy with the current performance. I would not be upset with the current performance, but the longevity of the system makes it a little hard to recommend, but we'll talk more about that during the outro. Let's do a little gaming and push them. It's probably a bad idea. Woo, Thunderbolt, you almost got me, buddy. This is super smooth, man. I, I, I can't complain about how smooth this is. It's running really, really good right now. Oh, hello, enemy. This is the sniper I can never hit anybody with. Nice. Got them. I'm gonna get shot from behind, aren't I? Oh, it's found them. Woo! Woo, 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 Can peek back out? I can't figure out the bullet drop. I figured out the bullet drop. Oh, who's this guy? Oh. Yeah, you best bail away. Really? Oh! Let's just stop goofing around. Oh! Where are you? What is, what is happening over here? They really just bounce out with my shotgun. That was, that was, that was crazy behavior, I'll be honest. No, they had 32 HP. Uh, that was a tough run. That was a good run of Fortnite. Couldn't get the double-double on the benchmark runs, but you know what? That was a good run overall. And this PC, again, it has upgrade issues, but the performance is good. We'll just talk about our overall recommendation after we run some other benchmarks, but uh, so far, so good. So we just got done benchmarking our Asus Tough Gaming PC, and I gotta say, it didn't let me down as much as I thought it would. It actually played really every game that we threw at it. It can do 1440p, you can do 1080p, super high refresh rate if you want. It's still just kind of the whole concept of these parts are pretty proprietary. You can never change the CPU cooler, the case, the power supply. You have to buy sodium RAM and it's single channel right now. Uh, the CPU soldered, so you can't change that. So those are pretty long list, but overall, if you just buy this PC and you wanna use it, it's not too bad. Let's I want to talk about the other benchmarks we ran on this PC. We ran the CS2 benchmark, 1080p low settings, to really stress the CPU to see what this laptop CPU is capable of. Got an average of 389.2 FPS with a 1% low of 157.4. Uh, we ran Black Myth Wukong, 1440p medium setting with DLSS. Got a 103 FPS average, a max of 125, a minimum of 18. A few stutters here and there, so again, a little bit of issues when it comes to the CPU. Oblivion Remastered, 1440p high settings with DLSS. Got an average of 70 to 80 FPS. And for 3D Mark time, so we got a score of 15,111, which is a nine cent per point. And for a PC that we didn't build, that's actually really not a bad score at all, especially one that's on the pricier end of things. So yeah, it's kind of up to you guys to decide. Do you want to have a small compact PC that's overall pretty quiet, pretty efficient, or do you want to have a pretty good upgrade path? The upgrade path is going to be the biggest issue with this system in the long run and probably the main concern of you guys down below, but I want to know what you all think. And if you do end up wanting to buy this PC for yourself, check the link in the description down below for up-to-date pricing and availability. Given the market, it is $12.99, which is the current price point, but who knows what it's going to be at. Honestly, if it was cheaper, it might be more appealing to people, but at the higher price point, there may be better options, but let me know down below what you think. And once again, link in the description down below. But as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Rose. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Now, if you thought this build was pretty cool and you want to pick it up, it will be for sale at PCBros.Tech. It'll come with a warranty and hopefully the price is a little better. PCBros.Tech, we sell gaming PCs like this one. We feature here on the YouTube channel. That's what I was trying to get out at first. And you just go Toasty Bros on checkout. You'll save 3% your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye. I want to go take a